In this video, let's understand about U-turn NAT. In this section, uh, as a part of NATing, understanding the NATing technologies that is available in Palo Alto, uh, starting from the NAT overview um, video, we understood about uh, the, what is NAT function, how does it functions in Palo Alto, and we understood about the differences between uh, the source NAT and destination NAT, and following to that, uh, we, we understood practically in, in our lab, practically we understood about each method, each and every method that's available under source and destination NAT uh, functions, which is available in Palo Alto, right? So following to that in this section um, about NATing, here in this video, let's understand about the U-turn, all right? So generally, U-turn uh, NAT is required in two scenarios, right? One is when you have a, a internal user or let me open my pen. When you have your internal user with private IP address, want to connect to a server that is deployed in the internal DMZ zone, but running with the public IP address. So in that case, you may need an U-turn. Or the second scenario, and that would depend uh, to this. Mm -hmm. The second scenario, when you don't have a internal DNS and you fully depend on your external DNS, which is available in the internet. All right. Say, for example, uh, what happens? Uh, let, let's consider that th this particular server, right? It is a web server, right? So uh, just consider that it is www.example.com. Okay. So when this user want to connect to this example.com server, uh, if in case you have an internal DNS which is placed in your server zone or within your organization zones, right? What happened anyway, uh, apart from this public IP address, there may be a private IP address as well. To this, we can have a private IP address as well to the server. So with that, uh, if, if in case you have an internal DNS, then uh, this resolution will be going to your internal DNS and that DNS would be giving you the the private IP address of the server means you might have added the record in such a way, right? So that that in that case, th this particular uh, user traffic would be directly going through like this, right? So you'll be adding a security policy from here to allow the transaction from inside zone to DMZ zone. However, if you don't have uh, internal DNS and if you completely rely on the external DNS, what happened? So if you even if you want to access to this particular uh, application which is in your DMZ zone which are in your organizations means uh, as per you this is an internal right so in your in your own DMZ zone what happened your request will be going to internet maybe crossing firewall it will be going to internet and it would be reaching a DNS server in the internet and that DNS server as, as it is in a public right as it is in uh, internet it would be resolving and it would be giving only the public IP address of your server because you might have given you, you might have added the record in such a way uh, as it is a DMZ, DMZ zone uh, because you will be uh, giving you, you might have added a record of the public IP only in the public DNS because uh, the users from the internet also will be reaching towards the same server, right? So you will be giving the, you might have added the public IP uh, to the record to reach the example.com. So in that case, what happened, even if it is an, because the DNS server is not worrying about whether your traffic is coming from here or here, right? When the request is coming, asking for www.example.com, as per the record added here, it will give you the IP 2020.11. So which is again a public address. Right. So in that case, again, this traffic would be going means internet. It, it's a kind of it's it's it, it is not an internal transaction. Mm -hmm. Right. It is not an internal transaction. So uh, which is going from inside zone to DMC zone. So in this it will be going to the internet and again coming back and going to the DMC zone. Right. So that is the reason we are referring it as the U-turn. OK, so U-turn. I'll repeat the main uh, situation when you need a U-turn is when your internal user with the private IP address want to connect with the server that is deployed in your DMZ zone with the public address. So in that case, your request will not be an, this transaction will not be an internal transaction. Uh, you will not have a security policy. You will be, you can write, but this transaction will not be an internal, right? So 
the request will go to like this through the internet phasing uh, port okay through the internet phasing port and it will come back if if you consider that this is the internet phasing port then your request would be if 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 you consider this is the internet connected port okay so in that case your request will be going in this way and it will come to here okay it, it will go here and come here it will go here and come here it it is not directly going here because it's internet transaction it, it it is not directly going here all right it is going to the palo alto it's going to the wan interface and then it's coming here and it's going to the dmz through the dmz interface right so that is the reason we refer it as the u turn net see there is a u turn right this is the reason we refer it a u turn all right as i said if in case you have a internal dns here placed if in case you have internal dns placed then there is no need for a u turn you can you know you can directly from here to here there is an internal transaction you can make right even even through the firewall i'm saying even through the firewall you can just go through this interface from then this interface you can you can just go through this interface right there is no need of a u turn but when you fully depend on the external dns and you want to connect from the private ip address of the internal user to the public address of the server that's deployed in the dmz zone then there is a way then your your traffic will go through the wan interface and then it will come to the dmz zone interface okay right so that is the reason we refer this as a u turn all right now let's uh, logically theoretically we understood how we understood how does it works but uh, let's let's go to our lab and let's see how does it work or how to configure it all right i'll just clear this let's go to our lab now okay so rdp all right so this is the uh, same topology that i have taken if you see uh, for this particular uh, you know understanding about u turn i have a uh, three zones uh, but uh, we primarily uh, concentrate about inside zone dmz zone anyway but this outside zone is also required because traffic is not going directly from inside to dmz it is going through the outside okay just consider that this outside zone is the untrusted network or the internet phasing connectivity this user is coming from internet just just consider in such a way all right so this is an internet connectivity just consider it okay fine so i have all the uh, you know um, the basic basic configurations are already available like uh, the interface ips are configured as per this topology and uh, we have a three zones already configured and also we have a route so in this section in, in this as per this topology we need to have a route okay uh, to reach this and this and i uh, have a route configured in addition to that i have a simple security policy right uh, from any zone to any destination i said to allow okay it's not specific to zone uh, it's in very straightforward simple security policy from any source whenever a traffic is coming towards any zone allow it okay that's it uh, as i said i don't want to repeat uh, things again and again so that's the reason i already configured uh, this basic configurations because in our previous videos as a part of this palo alto training uh, in multiple videos we have repeatedly uh, shown you we have repeatedly seen how to configure the interface ip address create zones and uh, you know the basic things like routing and uh, security policies right so I, i don't want to repeat it again and again because it may be um, some may not feel good to see that right fine so let's let's go directly to the nat part let's see how to configure it maybe before that i can show you uh, the configurations instead of creating it as i have already uh, configured i can show you so if you see i have three interfaces 1/1 1/2 1/3 this is connecting to my internal user this is connecting to my outside user the untrusted uh, network internet and uh, means uh, as per our topology right and this is uh, connected to the dmz zone so these are the ip address that i have configured based on our topology all these three interface are part of the same virtual router all right and i have added the same zones like i uh, have three zones right inside zone dmz zone and outside zone okay fine and also i have a virtual router as i said so all the three three interfaces are added to it and i have added the static route to reach the dmz and outside network right 
just close it and also as i said i have a very simple policy here to allow uh, traffic from any zone to any zone so this is a very simple policy whenever a traffic that's coming from any source any source okay uh, it, irrespective of zone address or whatever it is from any to any destination any application or any service allow it okay this is a very straightforward uh, very simple security policy so these are all the basic uh, configurations that's required before getting into it all right so now let's see how to configure the u-turn u-turn nat as you know in order to create any nat in order to use any nat we need to create a nat policy here right so by by default there won't be any policy by clicking the button here add you can create a new policy i'll just create um u-turn okay maybe u-turn u-turn nat okay so this is the name of my policy you turn that policy all right so here in the original packet we need we, we need to fill this information right so let's understand from the topology okay uh, now as per the topology this user right this machine is the source and here this is the destination all right so if i go here the source zone is the inside zone so i'll add this as inside zone as my source and destination as which zone is my destination dmz or outside zone uh, i should have not the dmz i should have outside zone because my traffic will go here to the outside zone and then it will go to the dmc zone right it's not directly going from inside zone to the uh, dmc zone okay as a part of a uh, u-turn net my traffic from inside zone will be going through this interface and it will reach this interface then it will take u-turn and then it will come here right so my uh the source is from inside to outside zone okay it's not dmc it's if, if in case it's a dmc then it can straightly go right there is no point of having a u-turn so as it is a u-turn the initial traffic is from inside zone to outside zone only then it will return and go here so uh, maybe the destination zone is i'll put outside zone you can have any interface or you can explicitly add one slash two and as you know you can uh, write an ad policy for any service or specific to a particular service like http https or whatever it is right and source address so here you can specify the source address maybe i'll just specify the user address here 10.10.11 10 i believe 11 slash 32 correct it's 10 10 10 11 slash 32 and uh to which interface it's hitting it would be hitting to the interface 50.50.100 .50 uh, this interface which is pointing towards my internet connectivity all right as per the topology so in in your environment maybe uh or in your production you'll be seeing such uh, uh interface which is pointing towards the external network hmm. or the internet network, internet 50 50 50 dot 100 all right fine then i'll go to my translated packet so here is the uh you know very important thing so so far uh as a part of a netting in a multiple videos we understood detailed about source net right we understood uh that means we spent uh, almost uh more time right we spend more time for each topics right practically we understood about different methods and we understood how does it work with the help of a washer captures but you don't see any option for u-turn right you have only option for source net and you have only option for destination net then where is the place to configure the u-turn here is the question right so the answer is u-turn is the combination of both source net and destination net or when you enable when you use both the source and destination net that is what u-turn <laughs> simply all right so in order to use the uh, u-turn we need to make use of both so as per this topology what what we have written in the original packet when source is inside zone and destination is outside zone okay so here we need to make the source net all right so i'll just go here dynamic ip port uh, maybe we'll go with the internet interface ip address okay so here we need to specify the outside zones interface ip because our traffic will be as i said it 
our traffic will not get directly going to this interface it will go here it through this interface it will go and touch and come right so i'll put this interface and what's the ip of that interface is 50 50 50 100 slash 24 all right so now we uh, we have written an ad to go this way to return so now uh, means to reach this interface now we need to add to return to it here to this through this interface towards this server right so we need to go for destination address destination net and here i'll put static ip and here i'm sorry uh, i made a mistake here uh, what happens here this is not one slash two uh, this should be one slash three i'm sorry uh, one slash three and this should be the thing because uh, already here in the original packet we mentioned as like sources inside zone and destination is outside zone right so uh, but when it's a source net when you want to make a source net it is talking about this okay it is talking about this session from this interface to here okay so it will be when it is crossing this interface it it will be source netted to this ip address i'm sorry okay all right so i have configured it here and static ip i need to means i need to do the destination net okay let me put the actual server ip here it's 20.20.20.11 .20 .20 okay so it's very simple i'll repeat it again so your source is inside your destination is outside zone okay and uh, the source user ip you can either specify ip or not but you need to specify the destination ip address because this is the interface it's configured right this ip is configured so you, you are putting in such a way that in the original packet right when a packet that's coming from this particular source to this interface ip this ip address in the outside zone okay when it is going to here then what you need to do do a source net in such a way that this is it should out through this interface with this ip address as the translation ip all right okay and then again at the same point you, you are enabling the destination net so you know what is destination net right so we have uh, practically understood about destination net in last previous videos so when it hits this ip it is translated to this ip all right so when when user from 10 10 10 11 is trying to hit to 50 50 50 dot 100 in the outside zone this packet will come here and destination net will be uh, triggered and this ip is destination netted to this ip so the traffic will be again rerouted here okay when it is rerouted here and it's going trying to go in here we also enable a source net so that here at this point at eth 1 slash 3 the source net will be performed and the source ip will be translated to this ip okay and it will reach the destination and again we'll be getting the response i'll show you so that's the reason we have added here that's it simple we'll commit the changes so let it take some time so once it is committed then we'll go to our uh, client machine here we'll go to our client machine here and we'll initiate the traffic towards this interface but when you initiate to this interface the request will come as i said from the inside zone to the outside zone to this interface ip it will hit as we have a destination NAT configured it will be natted to this ip right it will be redirected again but how it will go through this interface so we also have a source net configured so when it crosses through this interface the source ip of this would be translated to this ip all right so this is how the u-turn works it will go here this interface then again it come back and it goes let's see whether it's committed it's almost done all right let's close here and we'll go here let me open a web browser from this machine okay from this machine now maybe we can capture the packet as well like i'll just go here capture the eth1 slash 1 and also i'll capture for eth1 slash 3 we'll just go here capture 1 slash 3 right so both the side it's capturing fine so now let me go here to this machine and also make sure that this 
web server is running in this device okay so if you see here uh, it's listening on port 80 right so our web server is working all right now let me go to my user machine here okay this is the user machine i'm referring here i'll open a browser so from this browser i should give the ip address of this interface okay so when i give the ip address of this interface it will be added to this and we'll be getting a response we'll check how does it work 50.50.50.100 all right see we are getting a response which means as i said earlier we are trying to initiate a traffic from this uh, user with the private ip address towards this interface public ip address when it is coming here at this zone outside zone this interface we have a destination at configured so it is translated to this ip so the traffic is again it's going in this way as we have a source net configured in this interface here again source net will be performed and source ip address is translated to this ip all right let's stop the capture and look here i'll stop the capture on both okay uh Maybe I'll follow the stream. Okay, so this is the capture that is initiated. Okay, this the other way. Maybe I'll just go to this one. I'll follow the stream. All right. So if you see here, right, uh, th this is the transactions between the client uh, th th or this is the capture that is taken on the ETH one slash one. OK, the interface where uh, the inside user are connected. If you see here, um, the client, right, it's 10.10.10.11. .10 .10 this is the actual IP address of the client or the user with the private IP address. This request is going to the uh it's a public ip address right it's an internet facing interface ip or a van van ip address i would say okay so uh f this is where it is going okay this is the first packet this is where it is going and if you see uh there is a three-way handshake means from here we are it's sending an sin and we are getting a synac and again it's sending an acknowledgement and there is a successful three-way handshake and this client is initiating or getting for a http request right using a get method it is requesting for the http and what happened as we have a destination net enabled here for this particular ip address or this interface let's go back to the other capture that is taken in the interface one slash three all right so if you see here the source is 20.20.20.100 20 20 20 okay the destination is 20.20.20.11 20 20 so the actual source address is 10.10.10.11 .10 uh, 10 okay that's a private ip right so it, it's translated to the um, eth one slash three interface ip address and also if you see the destination ip address to which the client initiated is 50.50.50.100 .50 but the destination is also changed translated to 20 20 20 11. so both the source and the destination is translated if you see here the entire uh, communication should be between 2011 uh, the interface 1 slash 3 to the uh, 2020 uh, 100 uh, to the interface 1 slash 3 uh, sorry the, the 2020 uh, 2011 this is the actual web server ip and 2011 is the interface 1 slash 3 ip all right so this is how the U-turn uh, NAT works, okay? You can also, maybe I'll just close this capture. You can also go and check in the monitor, okay? You can also go to the traffic here. If you initiate, uh, maybe if you see here in the session browser, let's see if there is something, nothing. Okay, let's initiate uh, one more time and um, I'll initiate one more time we'll go here we'll refresh for it okay so if you see here right i'll just open this one okay uh this is a session browser right 
if you see here the source is 10.10.10.11 which is actually a client ip and the destination is 50 50 50 100 but on the return traffic if you see right uh, the source is uh, the server's ip is 20 20 20 11 which is nothing but the web server ip and it is sending to the destination 20 20 20 dot 100 that's uh, palo voltage 1 slash 3 interface ip right so this is also a proof that it is in doing both source and destination net we can also go to a traffic and we can open any one okay maybe i'll just open this okay and lodge it if you see the source is 10 10 10 11 this is again the uh, internal private ip it is initiated towards 50 50 50 100 all right so when it is initiated to 50 50 100 this ip right this destination ip address is translated to the other destination which is actual uh, web server which is in the dmz zone that's 20 20 20 11 all right at the same time wh when it is crossing this interface and passing to the 1 slash 3 right from 1 slash 2 1, 1 slash 3 when it's going the source address is translated to the nat ip 2020 20, 20 100 okay fine so in this video we understood practically also with an uh, wireshark capture we understood how u-turn natting works and in which situation it is required all right